Yanya Lalic, an expert in extremism, defines a cult as a group or movement held together by a shared commitment to a charismatic leader or ideology. It has a belief system that has the answers to all of life's questions and offers a special solution to be gained only by following the leader's rules. It requires a high level of commitment from at least some of the members. She lists four common characteristics to all cults. A charismatic leader, a transcendent belief system, systems of control, and systems of influence. The charismatic leader starts the group with a message that resonates with a few followers, who then spread that message, creating a tone that centers around the leader. The group's belief is, by taking part, the members will move to a better place by going through a required transformation. Along the path of transformation, there are increasing systems of rules and regulations, modeled by the senior members of the cult that create influence and control over the group. Members are completely immersed in this new reality, and their minds are close to any other worldview. The cult becomes the only source of light and hope. If we examine constant action as a cult, are these four characteristics present? Is there a cult of action? The Characteristics of the Cult of Action America is seen as a land of opportunity. If one is willing to work hard, then one can achieve anything. While there is not a particular charismatic leader at the center, the ideology that hard work is the only way to live is pervasive in American corporate culture and suggests the first cult characteristic. I agree work is required to see and maintain success. I wonder, though, if there is a line that constant action crosses to either make us isolate ourselves from being productive or lead us to killing everything we hold dear. If hard work was the only thing needed to succeed, why is there a $366 billion industry for business leadership development? It is because those in leadership positions search for ways to transform their organizations to be more effective and consume nearly everything this industry produces in an effort to make their companies more successful. Here could be the second cult characteristic, a transcendent belief system. The issue is the advice on how to be more effective can also make the organization less successful. Yet the belief system is so strong, organizations can miss the negative side effects of implementing the advice. Award-winning leadership thinker Jeffrey Pfeffer dissects the industry in his book Leadership BS, seeking to uncover why despite the intent to lead well, business leadership development is resulting in employee disengagement, high turnover rates, and failed development efforts. Among a number of points in his research, two particularly stood out that show a large disconnect between leadership and employees. The first is the idea that while those in leadership have a lot of responsibility— they have less stress because they are in control of what they do and how they do it. Those who follow have less, if any, control. One of the most stressful things is to have a job with a lot of demands, but no control over how and when you meet those demands. Leaders make decisions that affect employees without knowing or sometimes caring what is really happening throughout the organization. One such example of this disconnect is leaders who felt working hard or being loyal deserved nothing more than a regular paycheck. Leadership is ultimately responsible for how the organization performs and will need to make decisions for the good of the company. Those decisions will affect individuals in different ways. This is part of the stress of leadership. When the company culture moves from a healthy, supportive organization where employees are valued to a controlling organization where employees are considered objects, it could be indicative of the third cult characteristic, systems of control. Another disconnect between leadership and employees that Pfeffer identifies is while the leadership industry preaches the need for transparency and honesty, successful leaders are not always either or both. Pfeffer asserts the leadership industry spreads myths about business leaders as heroes or knights in shining armor. For example, the famous CEO of GE, Jack Welch, is described as valuing every employee and inspiring confidence. These stories became what corporate employees expect to receive from their leadership. Pfeffer's research shows that successful business leaders are far more flawed. Welch 
frequently used a rank-and-yank policy, where the bottom 10% would be fired as a matter of course, regardless of overall performance, to manage costs. This policy resulted in an aggressive internal culture to survive. Again, leadership must make difficult decisions that influence the company culture. Positive or negative, the policies and procedures that are developed influence employee behavior. When the results foster collaboration, innovation, and positive energy, employees are more engaged. Yet even the most positively written policies can create turmoil in a company culture when employees use them to manipulate and control others. This could be an indication of the fourth cult characteristic, systems of influence. The land of opportunity spawned a whole new breed of men without souls. Don Henley. This behavior can also be less obvious and something everyone has done. Pfeffer tells of a story where, over many months, a good friend had to slowly watch his daughter die after a drug overdose. His employer was sympathetic for a couple of weeks, but eventually he was expected to get back to the job he was hired for. His employees may have been sympathetic for a couple more weeks, but they also expected him to place the pain aside and be fully present in an engaged, energetic way. To continue to be a leader, one is often asked to betray their authenticity to put the group's needs ahead of their own. In doing this, they model behavior that makes it very easy for the employees to feel that they should give up a day on the weekend to complete work or pull an all-nighter to get ready for a presentation. When this is a one-off, it might be considered tolerable. But when it becomes the norm, burnout is not far behind. When looking at the four characteristics of a cult, we can see how some corporate cultures mimic a cult. There is a created system where the leadership is divine with a mythical aura, and we have a leadership industry creating a tone centered around that divinity. There is at least anecdotal evidence of the systems of control and influence. Business cultures can become machines who promote a cult of action that eventually leads to employee burnout. What can we do if we want to defect? Pfeffer suggests if we realistically see the flaws in our leadership and regard the people in those positions as humans, we can also see ourselves as human. In turn, we can accept ourselves and adopt behaviors that allow us to function in the system and take us where we want to go.